It's been eight months since the American College of Cardiology acquired Medaxium, a culmination of years of collaboration between the two companies. Wondering how Medaxium, now an ACC company, plans to transform cardiovascular care for clinicians and patients? Get the straight scoop from Medaxium president, Dr. Jerry Blackwell, on today's Medaxium Heart Talk. The fact that we combine these organizations and combine the data registries allows us to both look at the quality and the cost side through performance metrics. So the secret sauce are those two things. Welcome to MedAxiom Heart Talk, the podcast where thought leaders come together for one ultimate goal to continually transform and optimize cardiovascular care for all. MedAxiom Heart Talk starts now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Cheryl Toth, and today we have a really special guest calling in from Kingsport, Tennessee, clinical cardiologist, physician executive, and MedAxiom president, Dr. Jerry Blackwell. It's so nice to have you here Dr. Blackwell, welcome to MedAxiom Heart Talk. Thank you. It is uh, absolutely my pleasure to be here, Cheryl. Thank you. You are welcome. We're pleased to have you, and I'm going to tell listeners a little bit about who you are and a little bit about your background, and then we're going to proceed to this wonderful conversation about MedAxiom and your role. So, Dr. Blackwell, you I know you graduated from Marshall University, Joan C. Edwards School of Medicine, and you completed your residency at The Ohio State University and a fellowship at the University of Alabama. Birmingham, and you earned your executive MBA at the University of Tennessee. So you have, Dr. Blackwell, more than 30 years of experience in cardiovascular medicine, um, everything from academic cardiology to private practice to large integrated cardiovascular group leadership, and you still have a clinical practice focused on cardiovascular MRI and CT angiography and cardiac positron emission. Most recently, you served as executive vice president and Chief Clinical Officer of Ballard Health System. And so what I'm wondering is if you could kind of start things by telling us what drives you to do this kind of work. Well, thanks for the uh, introduction, Cheryl. Uh, I I love the practice of medicine. I I love healthcare, and uh, I love uh, the notion of servant leadership. Um, uh, You know, the, the, the clinical practice of medicine, the uh, ability to touch folks and to, to help folks uh, is what drove me to, to go into medicine uh, uh, 30 plus years ago. And uh, interestingly, it still drives me uh, perhaps even harder uh, today. It's, it, I believe it's a calling uh, and I've enjoyed every moment of it. Um, as, as far as what I'm doing right now, I'm very interested in a collaborative work team sports, if you will. And I believe that uh, for medicine be, to be successful, maximally successful going forward, it's going to involve uh, uh, peak organizational performance and collaborative work across the entire healthcare enterprise. And so uh, MedAxiom is positioned at the forefront of that movement. Uh, and I'm, I'm just honored to be participating. And it, it's the reason that I took this job. That's great. I I can appreciate that idea of servant leadership and that it's a calling um, that makes it feel like your heart is in the right place and um, you know what you bring to the table in collaboration is exciting. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. I'd be curious to also know what you're passionate about in your personal life. You know, when you take off your lead vest, as it were, um, what do you enjoy doing? Oh, wow. Now, th- this may take a little longer. So uh, <laughs> it, it, the, the fact is that I have a wide variety of interests, but uh, you know, what, what motivates me uh, primarily is my, uh, my personal faith uh, and my family. Uh, I have a beautiful family with a, a wife uh, that will be married 37 years here coming up in, in just a few weeks, uh, the three married sons, and, uh, and actually just earlier this morning, we welcomed uh, our eighth, uh, eighth grandchild into the fold. Oh, well, congratulations. Um, so it's great. Thank you. Yeah, so, so thank you very much. Very, very focused on that. But, um, but I am an absolute outdoor and sports nut, so I like all sorts of uh, recreation, uh, fly fishing. Um, there, there's no sports that I'm not interested in, uh, particularly college basketball, but, uh, but sports football and, uh, and basketball in particular. So any, anything outdoor, my wife is exactly the same way. So we really enjoy outdoor activities. 
That's great. Uh, outdoor activities include hiking, walking, biking too? Yeah, my wife and I are, are native West Virginians and we currently, and, and we've lived for the last 25 plus years in Northeast Tennessee. Uh, so we love the mountains. Um, you know, we like uh, four seasons and uh, so uh, hiking, golf, tennis. My, my wife was a college tennis player, so uh, she's very passionate about that. And, and so really uh, almost anything that has a ball or a racket <laughs> or allows us to be outdoors in uh, uh, you know, walking, fly fishing, what have you, uh, we're going to be interested in. That's terrific. That's why, that's where you get all your energy. I mean, you, you clearly have a lot of energy to do all the things you do. So the fact that you're so active, I'm sure, helps support that. Um, let's move a little bit over to uh, MedAxiom a little bit. When the ACC approached you about the MedAxiom job, I know you were the cl chief clinical officer uh, for Ballard Health System at that time. So what inspired you to choose MedAxiom and walk away from such a prestigious role with that health system? Well, uh, Cheryl, that's a fantastic question and one that I'm really happy to answer because um, I, I really did have a wonderful job. I was the, uh, uh, the Ballard Health System was uh, a recently merged health system for the system that I worked in for the, the past 20 plus years, as well as the, our, our regional competitor. And my the position in there was uh, very transformative. I mean, it was, it, it allowed me, uh, we had about 800 employed physicians, about 2,500 total physicians and served an area of about 9,000 square miles. So it was a, it was actually a, a fantastic job. However, um, I found myself, uh, the, the MedAxiom position um, really got to sort of the root of what I want to do. And as I mentioned, uh, couple moments ago, I really am interested in team play performance, organizational performance. Uh, and I felt like that what MedAxiom was at the forefront of was going to be transformative at a national level in the cardiovascular space. I'm very dedicated to cardiovascular space, obviously, with my background. And I thought uh, that this is just going to give me a national platform to make an impact. So that's uh, the first part. The second part is equally important. And that is uh, that I love the American College of Cardiology, and it was uh, MedAxiom was recently acquired by the American College of Cardiology. The CEO is a longtime uh, friend and professional associate, Dr. Tim Atterbury. So Tim serves as both the CEO of the American College of Cardiology and, and of MedAxiom. Uh, he and I have worked together in the past, and I have a, uh, I think, uh, a clear understanding of Tim's vision for uh, cardiovascular transformation, and uh, thought that working hand in hand with him. Uh, we could have an impact for, for many years to come. Well, so this idea about having a, being part of a, an organization that has a national platform and this vision that you have shared with Dr. Atterbury all sort of speak to the two of you as physician leaders. And I know having read a little bit about you that you've got this passion for physician leadership. What are some of the char characteristics you feel make you an effective physician leader? Well, I am passionate about the notion of uh, physician leadership because in healthcare, uh, if you don't view it as a calling, if you don't view yourself as being involved in servant leadership, that uh, you can't uh, maximally improve the plight uh, of our fellow man. Um, I, I think for effective physician leadership, um, I believe professionalism is at the forefront of that. In other words, I believe that it's uh, very important that in this blessed profession of medicine that the provider's role is subordinate to the, to the patients that we serve and, in fact, society that we serve. Now, I also believe that you know, the uh, physician training really allows us to uh, function very effectively as the quarterback of a multidisciplinary and complex team that is required to provide maximal value to both the patient and to society. And it is very important for me to stress here. Uh, the, the physician side of this is important, but absent uh, nursing, advanced practice providers, um, all of the support uh, infrastructure for the healthcare system, home-based care, uh, on and on, with social help for the social determinants of medicine. If you don't have the complete team, uh, you, you can't be maximally affected. And I believe the, physician, the physicians that have been uh, well-trained and are committed to this uh, are best positioned to provide that leadership. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier your your um, interest in collaboration and that you've done a lot of that across your career, and now you're talking about this complete team in cardiovascular care. 
physicians being the leader of that team, as we move toward more toward value-based care and we need that collaboration among the team, what are some of the things that physicians can bring to that team? Sure. So again, the, the, the key part of this is driving value, value through the eye of the person uh, or persons receiving the care and value through the, uh, through the prism of society. Uh, because uh, it, you, it, it's important that what we do here uh, has a cost to society that's bearable as opposed to unbearable. And uh, I think that, the, that what physicians can do to actually drive value is deal with both sides of the value equation. The numerator in the value equation is quality. So physicians uh, really, really must stay at the forefront of being sure that uh, the, the care that we deliver is of the highest quality that we uh, follow evidence-based guidelines. We stay very current, but the denominator of the value equation is cost. And so the things that we do, physicians need to be very cognizant that we're not uh, over testing or that we're not doing things that cost uh, more money. And the physician is very well positioned to deal with both the quality side of the value equation and the cost side of, of the value equation. Well, that's a, I think that's a great segue to lead us into some of the data and some of the benefits that Medaxium brings to the community. Some of the things you said in um, a recent guest editorial in Cardiology Magazine, you touched on some of those benefits for the Medaxium community. So what does the collaboration of these two organizations now bring to the value equation or bring to the CV community? Yeah, thanks, Cheryl. That, that is actually the, gets back to the crux of why I, I took this job. Uh, and you quickly asked me about things that motivate me in my personal life, and I've, I've focused on team play and team sports, and it, it gets back uh, to that, believe it or not, in, in, in answering that. One of the things that motivated me both <clears throat> about the ACC and MedAxium is that both have uh, kept score, if you will, bringing back to these sports analogies. The ACC, long before it was fashionable, became involved in data registries, data registries with millions of data points to talk about how care is delivered and to really focus on uh, keeping score on the quality side of things. Medaxium in like fashion has kept score as it relates to organizational performance, having performance metrics, uh, how do the best organizations um, provide the care. So the marriage of the uh, clinical quality work on the AC side, ACC side of the ledger and the organizational performance metrics on the Medaxium side of the ledger, uh, combining those, those two provides the complete equation for uh, providing the best possible care. So I, I think if, if I had to pick one thing, it would be the combination of two organizations that have kept score through very, very intensive data registries. And what to combine, what kind of power does that have for the Medaxim community and for cardiovascular services nationwide? What, what can be, what do you see as the opportunities for the two organizations marrying those databases um, in, in the market? Sure. And again, another great question. Uh, it, it gets back to what I mentioned before, and that is value is quality uh, over cost. And the fact that we combine these organizations and combine the data registries allows us to both look at the quality and the cost side, if you will, primarily through performance metrics. So it's it, the secret sauce are, are those two things together. Now, there's many other things that are valuable, but I, I think at its core, uh, ACC and MedAxium are able to do that uh, in a fashion that's superior to any other specialty organization in all of organized medicine. Um, there, there's one final part of this that we still need to uh, work on, and that is um, the payer side of this equation and, and understanding both internal and external costs. So it's a complicated soup that we're uh, trying to put together here, but I believe that we're positioned to do it better literally than any other specialty society in all of organized medicine. That's great. So combined data, organizational strength. These are some of the things that the MedAxium community is going to see in the coming months and years. Um, we're going to take a short break, Dr. Blackwell, and we'll be right back to talk a little bit more about uh, some strategic implications. Stay with us. We'll be right back. CV Transform is happening October 24 through 26th in Dana Point, California. Don't forget to download the CV Transform app 
where you'll get updated information before, during, and after the conference. Can't make it in person this year? Join us on Facebook. For the first time ever, MedAxium will live stream two sessions. On Thursday at 1.15 Pacific, our opening keynote will feature MedAxium CEO Tim Atterbury and MedAxium President Dr. Jerry Blackwell. And on Friday at 2.30 Pacific, ACC's Dr. John Rumsfeld will share on the challenge of digital transformation in CV care. Learn more at cvtransform.com. Welcome back to MedAxium Heart Talk. Our guest is Dr. Jerry Blackwell, clinical cardiologist and president of MedAxium. And uh, before we continue our conversation, I want to let listeners know that Dr. Blackwell will be joining Tim Atterbury, ACC CEO, to deliver the State of Cardiology kickoff general session at MedAxium's CV Transform. So that'll be on Thursday, October 24th, part of the CV Transform in Dana Point, California. So if you are planning on attending, and we hope you are, you do not want to miss that session. So Dr. Blackwell, uh, we talked a bit about qualities of physician leadership and benefits of the ACC MedAxium coming together. So how about giving us some insights about the strategies? What, what is the ACC MedAxium board looking at doing over the next three to five years? Uh, thanks, Cheryl. Yeah, there, there's, there are many things that uh, are being considered, um, and, and, and the list is long, but let me just broadly uh, paint the picture for, for the audience here. So our current information from the, the MedAxium data says that about uh, 85% of cardiologists are currently in an integrated or so-called employment model of various kinds, primarily with uh, health systems. So we have 85% of the cardiovascular uh, practitioners that are uh, integrated, which means, of course, there's 15% that are independent. And of course, as a, an organization, we are uh, MedAxium, as well as American College of Cardiology, is agnostic as to what the employment model is, but we care deeply about how the care is delivered. So our board is uh, trying to come up with things that help us to advantage uh, patients are being served by cardiovascular practices that uh, are involved with large health systems in an, in, in an integrated fashion, as well as those things that we can do to help independent practitioners as they you know, provide care. Many of the independent practitioners uh, serve urban regions, but there's a significant number that serve very rural regions in our, uh, in our country. The same is true of the healthcare system. So we're trying to come up with you know, models of care that advantage uh, folks that are served by both of those practice models. Uh, in addition, we're trying to come up with uh, strategies that allow us to collaborate with industry partners uh, in, a, in a wide variety of ways that heretofore have not happened. In other words, uh, industry has done their work independent of what's happened on the uh, practice side or the healthcare provider side and vice versa. We're trying to, to bring those two together. Uh, and finally, uh, we're, we're trying to uh, further refine those uh, organizational performance metrics that, uh, the, that we believe the marketplace needs to better understand to deliver better care. So there's, there's a, a sort of a broad swath of the things that we're looking at. So those are three great areas that you're working in. And I'm also um, interested in knowing about the uh, ways that maybe some of the major challenges CV programs are facing, given some of the, you know, the context of our current landscape with reimbursement and um, well, technology changes. You mentioned the care models that support employed cardiologists, rural, private practice, all those different, you know, that, that landscape is changing. What do you think that the ACC MedAxium partnership is going to do to help CV programs and support them in this current landscape sure. and what's happening? Sure. Well, I, I think that uh, one of the things that we want to signal to the marketplace we're already doing, and that is that we're open for business in the world of collaboration. I, I keep saying this over and over again, but I think it's very important because to maximally advantage the patients and society, we need the cardiovascular practices, we need the health systems, we need industry, and we need payers, all uh, four legs of that stool to work collaboratively and heretofore each have worked in their own silo. So for example, uh, what we would like to do is to uh, come up with ways to work in an innovative fashion with the payers so that 
uh, we as an organization, uh, MedAxiom and the, and the cardiovascular practitioners, agree that we're willing to, to go at risk for some of the uh, some of the care that's delivered. In other words, uh, we believe that the, the best organizations will be able to deliver the highest quality care at lower costs, and we can drive costs down and collaborate with the, uh, the payers to be sure that uh, that impact is felt in a positive way for both individual patients and society. That is really a new model. That's something that's not out there right now, or it's not as widely uh, disseminated as it should be. And, and we believe we can be at the, at the front of uh, coming up with those new models and, and, and uh, more importantly, making them work effectively. Very exciting. Now let's imagine it's a year from now and we're having another conversation. What would you like to be able to say that the ACC Medaxium relationship has accomplished on behalf of members and patients? If you were looking back. Yeah, and, 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 and actually, thank you for setting me up for that one because I, I feel passionately about that. I think that if we go about this effectively, uh, that um, folks will not be able to tell where ACC ends and MedAxiom begins. And very specifically what I mean by that is that folks will see that the entire cardiovascular enterprise uh, is driven both by the quality of the individual practitioner, and that's where the ACC has led for 70 years, and the effectiveness of the 2020 and beyond cardiovascular organization, those two are melded. Uh, and when folks talk about the ACC and MedAxiom, they're viewed as one and the same. Heretofore, what has happened is that all of the science and quality resided in one spot. Individual cardiologists tried to improve what they did, but uh, it didn't get transmitted throughout the entire organization. And I, I believe that in one year, if folks uh, think about ACC and MedAxiom and, and they uh, can't tell where one ends and the other begins, it really will be a marker of success for us. Wonderful. Well, that's what we'll be, that is what we'll be watching for. And any final thoughts about what members can expect under your leadership? Anything you'd like to share? Well, again, I, I, I'm honored to be the first uh, physician president of MedAxiom, and I believe it represents a shift uh, and a clear signal to the marketplace that we're all in this together. The, the physicians have a huge role in this, but there are going to be very few physician enterprises that are maximally effective if they don't have expert administrative leadership. And in like fashion, there are going to be very few organizations that have highly effective administrative and business leadership that don't involve the physicians. Team sport, that's how we started this conversation. That's how I'd like to end it. Mm -hmm. Great. Dr. Blackwell, thank you so much for your time. I know you're very busy. And the fact that you took some time with us today, we are so grateful. Yeah, it's, it's my honor. Thank you so much. That wraps up this episode of MedAxiom Heart Talk. If you liked today's episode, and if you're enjoying the new format, please recommend us to a colleague and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. To give us feedback directly or make a suggestion about future guests or topics, send an email to hearttalk at madaxium.com.